this video tutorial looks the mathematical strand of measurement and geometry and more specifically we're going to focus on location and transformation. Now in the previous video we were talking about the three types of transformations those being translations, reflections and rotations and this particular video is going to look at reflections. So essentially a reflection is when an object is mirrored in a mirror line and where the uh, equivalent points of the object and the image are equidistant. Now equidistant means the same distance from that mirror line. So if we look at our example we can see here we have a mirror line right? but in the actual answer our mirror line is here. All right. So we can see the mirror line in green and we can see a few points here. There's a point there and a point there, a point there and a point there. Now those points are all in fact, I'll use a different colour so you don't get too confused. Um, here, here. So the red dots are the same distance. So equidistant, you can see that this distance here and that distance there are the same. The D dots are the same distance away. All right, the B and the C dots are also the same distance away. And that those lines meet perpendicular with the mirror line. Okay, so we can see here some right angles where those lines meet the mirror line. Okay, and we're going to do a few examples to help you understand this concept. So let's have a look at example one. It says reflect the following object in the x-axis and the y-axis. Now when it says reflect in the x-axis, that means that the x-axis is the mirror. Alright, so let's pick this point. Remember that um, equivalent points have to be equidistant, so the same distance. Now this is one square away. All right. Therefore, our other point in the reflection must also be one square away. If we choose a different point, I'll use a different colour, this is four squares away. Therefore, my other point must also be four squares away. And my last point is three squares away. So therefore, this one must be three squares. And then if I join those triangles together, or those dots together, I should say, it'll be an exact reflection in the x-axis. Now, if we want to do a reflection in the y-axis, that means that the y is now our mirror line, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We'll start with the blue dot, it's one square away from the y-axis, therefore my reflection is one square away. The green dot is three squares away, so therefore my reflection is three squares away. The red dot is four squares away, so therefore my reflection is four squares away. And if I connect those dots, I then have a reflection in the y-axis as well. So let's look at example two. Example two is saying reflect the object below in the mirror line. So you need to identify the mirror line first. Now the mirror line is this line here, okay, in green. And we're going to start reflecting some points. So I'll put in some different colors so that we can identify what points we're going to need to reflect. Um, what other colour am I going to need? White, green and dark blue. So if we want to reflect the red, we can see that it's one length away. Therefore, my new dot is also one length away. The purple is two lengths away. So then my purple must be there. The blue is down, and you can see that I'm starting to just copy the picture. But this orange dot is three spots, so I know it must be there. The yellow is also three dots, so it must be over here. The light green then becomes there, and the blue is going to be one spot away. So I should now be able to connect those with a black line 
and then you have the reflection. Now example three is a little bit more tricky. Example three is suggesting that we can identify the equation of the missing mirror line in the image below. Now we can see, and I'll use green, that these points on these two different objects, so the equivalent points or the equivalent vertex must be equidistance apart. Now let's take, for example, these two green points. I know they are two squares apart, which means that the middle of those should be on the mirror line. If I take another two points here and here, they are also two squares apart, which means this dot here must be on the mirror line. Uh, if I take some more points, I've got a point over here and a point over here. Now they are two, three, four dots or four squares apart, which means the middle is here. So that's telling me that this red line is going to be my mirror line because all the, the equivalent points are actually equidistance apart or the same distance apart. Now I just need to find the equation of that line. Now given that this is the origin here, we know that's 1, 2, 3, 4 on our y-axis, so the y-intercept is 4, and we know that the rise over the run is 1, which tells us that our slope is 1, and we also know that the equation of a line, or a straight line in this particular case, is mx plus c, where c is our y-intercept and our slope is m. So we can rewrite this as y equals 1x plus 4, or simply y equals x plus 4. And that's our equation. So here's a practice question I would like you to have a go at. Um, it says find the equation of the mirror line that's missing below. Um, so it's very similar to example number three. Um, please feel free to pause the video and uh, once you think you've got the correct answer, continue and we'll see how you went. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find where our mirror line should be. So if I take these two dot points here, they are one square apart, which tells me that my mirror line is going to cut halfway through there. If I take another two points, doesn't really matter. These are two squares apart, which tells me that my mirror line is going to cut through there. And if I take any random another set of dot points, uh, let's go with here and here, again, two squares apart, so my mirror line looks like it's going to come through here because that line means that all of those dots and all of those vertex on the different objects are going to be equidistant apart. Now, based on our last question, we know this is the origin here. So this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 minus 5. So we know that our y-intercept is minus 5. We also know that our rise over run, this time we're going backwards, so our rise over our run is actually negative 1. Therefore our slope is negative 1 and we know that again our equation of a linear relationship is y equals mx plus c where the y-intercept is c and the slope is m so this becomes y equals negative x or oh, I've skipped a spot here negative 1x take 5 or simply y equals negative x take 5